Hambit, and I'm a pastry chef from Korea. Hi everyone, it's Hambit. 안녕하세요, 조한빛입니다. In today's Pastry 101, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about ganache. So what is ganache? Ganache is an emulsion made by combining chocolate and heavy cream. This word emulsion might sound like a difficult term, but just think of using a certain technique to combine water and oil which doesn't usually mix together. Ganache is used widely in pastry. It's used in truffles, so in chocolate products, in mousse, as a glaze, as a sauce, everywhere. So it's important that you learn how to make a perfect ganache. There are so many different types of ganache out there, so many different recipes. And the best way to categorize them is by looking at the ratio and the ratio between chocolate and heavy cream. Typically, when we say ganache, we are referring to a one-to-one -one ratio of chocolate and heavy cream. So that's equal ratio of chocolate and heavy cream. So based on this one-to-one -one ratio, you can think of either having more chocolate or less chocolate in terms of the ratio. So talking about a ganache where you have more chocolate than heavy cream, let's say we're talking about a two-to-one ratio. So two part chocolate and one part heavy cream. That will result in a ganache that is more thick and heavy. Going the other way, where we have less chocolate compared to the heavy cream. So let's say, for example, we have one part chocolate and three part heavy cream. That's what we call a whipped ganache because it's just light whipped cream. After the ganache has completely cooled down and stabilized in the fridge for at least like half a day, you can whip it like it's whipped cream. That's why we call it whipped ganache or in French, we call it ganache monté. So we've looked at ganache with different ratios and these different ratios will result in ganache with different textures. You might have seen recipes that have either butter or glucose. Adding butter to a ganache helps with the mouthfeel. So when you eat it, it melts inside your mouth and it gives a very pleasant mouthfeel. Regarding glucose, adding glucose does add sweetness to your ganache, but it extends shelf life. Another variation of ganache would be flavored ganache. The idea is that you can add fruit purees to your ganache or you can infuse your heavy cream with let's say vanilla or Earl Grey tea or any type of tea leaves. Right now I'll show you how to make the ganache. To be honest, making ganache isn't difficult as long as you stick to the guidelines. The most common method is to melt the chocolate, bring it up to somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. Same goes with heavy cream, bring it up to about 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, and then mix the two by either using a spatula or a hand blender. And that's pretty much it. But where a lot of people go wrong is by not melting the chocolate properly or by not mixing it properly. So here we have three different types of ganache by the different ratios. So in the middle, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So one-to-one -one ratio of dark chocolate, and this is covered with chocolate, and heavy cream. And here we have two to one, or we can say it's one to 0 0.5. So half the amount of heavy cream relative to the dark chocolate. And here we have whipped ganache. So much more of heavy cream relative to the chocolate. So one part chocolate and three parts heavy cream. I'll start by showing you how to do the one to one ratio ganache. I'm going to melt the chocolate to around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. I'll say 50 degrees Celsius just to make it easy. And I'm going to heat the heavy cream to around 50 degrees Celsius as well. Some people use a water bath, but I prefer using a microwave because it's so much easier. But just be careful when you're using the microwave. Don't leave inside the microwave for like two or three minutes because you're either going to burn the chocolate or your heavy cream is going to overboil. Have you clicked like and subscribe? So here I have melted chocolate and heavy cream that's been heated. I'm going to pour the heavy cream into the chocolate and stir it well. And there are a couple of ways of doing it. You can either use a spatula or a hand blender. Using a hand blender ensures that you get a good ganache. In this example, I'll show you how to do it with a spatula. The key is to start stirring from the center and move outwards. I'm going to pour all my heavy cream. The mixing technique is exactly the same as what I've shown you for a one-to-one -one ratio ganache. So pour the heavy cream and mix it from the center. Mm -hmm. 
perfect, so that's done. It's a two to one ratio where two is the chocolate and one is the heavy cream. Notice that this is still warm and hot and the texture is definitely much thicker than the one for the one to one ratio ganache. And of course, when it sets, it's going to be much thicker than the one to one ratio ganache. Wow! Your finished ganache when it's warm must look smooth and shiny and glossy. And finally, the whipped ganache. This is where we have much more heavy cream relative to the chocolate. Because I have much more heavy cream, I'm going to heat the heavy cream alone to around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, pour it into my chocolate, leave it for a few minutes, and the chocolate will all melt. Now I've heated up my heavy cream in the microwave, it's around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, I'm going to pour it over my chocolate. The mistake that a lot of people make is to jump straight in and blend it and try and emulsify it. The key is to wait for the chocolate to melt and then blend it using a hand blender. I'll give it about a couple of minutes and the chocolate will melt completely. Great, all the chocolate has melted so I'm going to blend it. Just make sure that your blender is dipped well beneath the surface so that it doesn't incorporate much air while blending it. What I'm going to do with this whipped ganache is I'm immediately going to cover it with cling film and put it in the fridge to set. I usually leave it for at least 12 hours before using it. So after 12 hours, I'm going to whip it and use it as whipped cream. Great, now I'm going to store this in the fridge for at least 12 hours before using it. And after that, I'm going to whip it and use it like whipped cream. Right, so here's my ganache that has been chilled so that I can show you the differences. Here's my 1 to 1 ratio, 2 to 1 ratio, 1 to 3 ratio. Right, let's look at the 2 to 1 ratio. So there's more chocolate than heavy cream. Straight out from the fridge is very hard. But still, it's not hard as Hershey's chocolate. It's a ganache. So this is the texture that you see of a 2 to 1 ganache straight out from the fridge. Obviously, it'll become softer than this if you leave it outside. Now let's look at the one-to-one -one ganache straight out from the fridge. It's definitely softer than the two-to-one ratio that we've just seen. You can notice the difference. It's much softer. Obviously this will become softer at room temperature, but I'm just comparing apples to apples. So straight out from the fridge, you can see that they're immediately different in terms of the texture and the consistency. Honestly, this texture looks so good. I have to try it. Mmm. I love ganache. It's so good. Now, moving on to 1 to 3 ganache, which is the whipped ganache. I'm going to whip this and show you that you can whip it like just whipped cream. So look at this. This is just like whipped cream. But because it's still a ganache, a ganache whipped cream, it's heavier in terms of the texture and it tastes better. Mm. Whipped cream and chocolate, it has to be delicious. Hopefully this tutorial on how to make a ganache was useful. Ganache is pastry 101 and is used widely across pastry. So it's worth taking a bit of time and learn how to make a perfect ganache. I'll come back next time with another pastry 101 video. Thank you very much. Kamtanga. I don't know what to know yet. I've tried some time.